So I've just got back from racing the final round of the Enduro World Series, which was held in Finale in Italy. For that race, I chose to use this bike, the Mondraker June RR Carbon. So the race took place over two days with four stages on the first day and two stages on the second day. So you climb to the top in Enduro under your own steam, there's no lifts. The racing is timed down these four stages, which are all mostly downhill. Uno. Go. But have a bit of climbing thrown in for good measure. So this is one of the reasons why I chose this bike. It's, it's quite light for a bike of its type. Straight out of the box it was 28.5 pounds, which for an enduro bike is, is quite light. So the main thing about the Mondraker June is it's built around what Mondraker call forward geometry. She uses a really long top tube, long front center with a short stem. So what this does is it keeps you confidently planted between the wheels. It allows you to move your weight back and forward to weight the front wheel when you need to but you never feel like you're gonna be pitched over the front wheel, which is really confidence inspiring on steep, rocky terrain and sharp corners too, which there were plenty of in Finale. So I really think this helps, helps you attack the course faster, just having that long front end and short stem. So the main modification I made was these Stans Bravo carbon wheels. They save a bit of weight over the stock wheels, but the main thing is they're really stiff laterally, but they have a bit of compliance built in vertically. That helps with comfort over really rocky terrain, but also um, reduces the chance of pinch flatting because they can give a bit when you really hit into a square edged rock or what have you. To help with those rocks, I've fitted a set of Super Gravity Schwalbe tires. I've got a rock razor on the back, which is really fast rolling. Not much damping, so in a straight line, when you're hard on the brakes, it does skip about quite a lot. But once you turn it into the corners, it grips really quite nicely. Up front is a Magic Mary, which grips really well in, in pretty much all conditions, from, from mud to sand and dust and rock, everything. It's really well damped. That combination, it saves you a lot of energy on the climbs when most of your weight is on the back wheel. Faster rolling rear tire, uh, that really helps. But on the descents, you've got all that grip up front so you can keep it under control okay. Maybe a better damped tire, like let's say a Schwalbe Hands Damp, would have been a bit grippier on the, on the descents but it would have wasted a bit of energy on the climbs and on the, the traversy parts of the stages too. So I think it's a pretty good combination. And the super gravity casings had no punctures. Uh, I had no issues with that on, on these wheels. They don't roll around, they're solid even at low pressures. They performed really well. I found that the bar height on the original bike was a bit short for my needs. I'm six foot three, I like a really nice high bar to give good confidence when descending on steep terrain. To get that, I had to swap to a bar with a bit more rise. This is a Pro Atherton bar, which has got 20 mil rise, which is about eight mil more than the standard one, so it's not huge. For that, I've got a 40 mil Bergtech stem, so slightly longer than the stock 30 mil. So that's allowed the, the bar height to be raised a wee bit more. So another couple of mods that I've made just to suit my personal tests. I've taken uh, the specialized SIP grips and specialized Henge Elite saddle off of my long-term bike just because I know I find those really comfortable. So this is quite an efficient pedaling bike. It has a lot of anti-squat to keep the pedal bob under control, which is a good thing for this race because there's a lot of pedaling involved and you need it to remain efficient. But I did find that there was quite a lot of chain growth and you could feel a bit of pedal feedback through the pedals when the suspension compresses suddenly. What I tried as kind of a bit of an experiment as much as anything is fit this oval chainring, which is the same size, it's a 32 tooth, but because it's oval, it gives you a higher chain line. So the chain is raised slightly above the pivot point, which gives you less chain growth and less pedal feedback. So I think you get a slightly more compliant suspension action. So a bit more, bit more traction on the rear wheel, which with that rear tire is really important. So I think that worked quite well. Maybe that's just me imagining things and kind of feeling what I expect to feel. This model comes with the Fox Float X shock, which with the Evo air can, I think performs really well in this frame. It's nice and supple off the top and, and is just progressive enough. I bottomed out a few times, but not harshly. If I was gonna have this bike a bit longer, run it on terrain, with, which involved more jumps or drops, I would definitely wanna put a bigger volume spacer in there. But for Finale, that shock I think worked really well. 
Up front we've got the Fox 36 fork with the Fit 4 damper, which I think is a bit harsher. There is a bit more feedback there than you would get from an RC2 damper. I definitely prefer that damper, to be honest, but even, even with the Fit 4, it, it performed really well. With the tires and the wheels, actually takes care of a lot of that chattery feedback, but I still think the RC2 damper is slightly superior to this one. As opposed to the original 36, this one comes with a quick release 15mm axle, but I really can't say I noticed any um, lack of, of stiffness because of it. And the fore and aft stiffness of the 36 as I was plowing into some really technical rocky terrain on one of the stages really seemed to help just keep the fork controlled and planted and you knew what was going on. One of the problems I had with this bike was a rock strike during practice. A rock flipped up from my front wheel and hit the down tube and it's left just a slight crack in the down tube. So these bikes aren't supplied with a down tube protector as a lot of carbon bikes are nowadays. I really think that would be a good thing. I, I think Mondraker really should be supplying them with a down tube protector. Another thing I found for me is that I couldn't get the bar quite high enough even with these slightly higher rise bars that I fitted afterwards. The front end felt a bit low when tackling really steep rocky terrain. On the whole though, it's a really fast bike. It's got efficient suspension, it's light, it's really stiff, which really helps when tackling tight rocky corners. The suspension on the whole performed really well, especially with those wheels and tires that just take the edge off that chatter, I think. But the main thing is the forward geometry. I think that long front center short stem combination just allows you to push a lot harder and really attack when you're racing or when you're just riding down steep terrain. It also makes it a bit better on the climbing because you've just got a bit more room to breathe. For the technical parts of the race, I think I did quite well. Like the bike really helped with that. I think it was more fitness is the main thing that probably let me down. So I ended up coming about 165th in the race, which is pretty humbling, it sounds, sounds pretty bad, but all the fast guys in the sport are at this race, and this is my first time competing at this level. I think I came about where I would normally expect to place among people who I, who I know from racing back home. On the technical parts especially, pushed on pretty hard and I think the bike really helped with that. If I'm going to do it next year, there'll be a lot more training involved, but the bike was pretty much spot on.